Good morning. And welcome to the Lord's house this morning at St. Paul's. We're glad that you're here and join with us today. Before we begin worship, a few things to uh, share in our congregation's life. Just a reminder that our, our St. Paul care cards are there in the pew racks in front of you. Um, as guests or as members, we're just asking you to weekly fill those out, sharing information, contact, request. Uh, the other side, the back side, also has a statement about communion, which we're celebrating today. So if you have an opportunity to look at that, just to help prepare you for the meal that Jesus gives to us and receiving it faithfully. Also, our uh, basement makeover group has worked. Um, we've got all sorts of things that are out in the hallways and in the rooms downstairs, the um, music room, the library, and the youth room. Um, if it's marked with a posty note, that means it can go. Uh, so if you go down there and you see something, uh, go ahead, uh, take it you can, today, or we're just asking you to do it by Tuesday the 29th. And otherwise, it's going to be relocated um, in different fashions to marketplace or donations or recycling. So uh, please help us out with that. I encourage you to go take a look today if you want. Also, next Sunday we have our missionary visit, Mindy Twos. As our Thaves is going to be here. Um, she grew up in the area, went to high school with some of you all at Waiwega Fremont, but has been serving for the past uh, about 10 years as a missionary to Taiwan. She's um, going to be with us next Sunday. Uh, uh, you can read more about her and the details in the worship bulletin. Uh, and just know that we are going to be doing a door offering too next Sunday to help support her and her work. And finally, our worship change times is going to happen fairly soon, September 10th, um, 8 o'clock and 10.30 with our education hour uh, in the middle for Sunday school for kids and adults. For the kids, moms and dads, is really helpful for us if, to register the kids. Uh, there are forms that are out on the table in the gathering area. Uh, they've been emailed to you and mailed to you, but we do like to get those back so that we can plan for materials and spaces um, as we welcome the kids back for Sunday school. That is it for those kinds of announcements. Our worship today, we're gonna to focus in on the gospel. It's one of Jesus' miracles, but the story is more about a persistent faith that this woman has as she keeps coming to Jesus uh, and asking for her or for him to help her and her daughter. And that's gonna be the theme that drives our worship. With that, I invite you to join in our opening song, There Is None Like You. baptism with his promise that we are his. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. people of God, let us search our hearts and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of Jesus to grant us his forgiveness. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. 
so we confess our sins to God our Father. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and actions of which I am ashamed. But some is known only to you. Be merciful to me, for the sake of Jesus, I ask for your forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may live in peace and walk in your ways. Upon your confession, I do have good news for you. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his only son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As pastor, it's my joy then to announce that grace of God to all of you, and in the stead by the command of Jesus, to forgive you your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Since you have given us your only Son as the sacrifice for our sin, also give us grace to receive and the benefits of his saving work, and daily follow in his way, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and rules with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And you may be seated as we share the word. The Old Testament reading for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from the prophet Isaiah, the 56th chapter. God instructing his people and us that he has come to reach out to all. Thus says the Lord, keep justice and do righteousness, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance will be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants. Everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it and holds fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The Lord God, who gathers the outcast of Israel declares, and I will gather yet others to him besides those already gathered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle is a continued reading that we've been sharing throughout the summer from Paul's letter to the Romans, selected verses from chapter 11 as Paul is lamenting still but also showing hope 
in this God who reaches out, not just to Gentiles, but also to his people Israel. I ask you then, has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an, am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Now I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch then as I am as apostle to the Gentiles. I may define my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? As regards the gospel, they are enemies of God for your sake. But as regards election, they are beloved for the sake of their forefathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were at one time disobedient to God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience, so that they too have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they may also now receive mercy. For God has consigned to all to disobedience, that he may have mercy on all. This is the word of the Lord. And I invite you to stand for the reading of the gospel. And the Holy Gospel today is according to St. Matthew from the 15th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district, district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and they begged him, saying, Send her away, for she's crying out after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done as you would desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. And I'd like to invite our kids to come and join me for our children's story. <laughs> What do you have on there, Violet? I've got two crosses today. Nice. Oh, yeah, but the Bible's coming through. Good morning. So I've got a picture for you guys. You know what this is, don't you? What is that? It is. This is a picture of a puppy. And that puppy's head is where? Can you see? On the table, that's right. Do, do you guys have dogs? Does there any have puppies? What's your puppy's name? Nice. And what's your puppy's name? You got two as well. And what's your puppy's name? Charlie. So, Nila, Charlie, does Charlie live in your house? And look at this picture of this puppy. Where is this puppy sitting? On the floor. And what's it looking up at? Can you tell, Nyla? The table. Does Charlie and your puppy ever sit and look up at the table? When they're looking at the table, what are they looking for? Food! That's right. Puppies do that. They look for food. I tell you that because I just shared that story with Jesus. And there was a woman who kept coming after Jesus asking. And he wasn't paying attention, was he? And then he says, you know, it's not right to take the food for kids and throw it to the puppies. Did you think his, her, her answer was pretty remarkable? She says, yes, Lord, you're right. 
but even the puppies get the crumbs that fall from the table. That's why puppies sit on the tables, don't they? They get the crumbs, they belong to them. And by that, Jesus said she showed great faith because she was willing to be called a puppy if Jesus would just throw her some crumbs. That's being faithful and really that's being persistent. Do you know what it means to be persistent? Kind of a big word. Do you know what it means to be persistent? What about you now? If you're persistent, you keep on asking. Persistent means you keep asking. That's what she was. She kept asking because she believed no matter what, Jesus would do something for her. Even if it was just crumbs. And it was something special because her master, she then, because of that, Jesus healed her daughter. We're going to be persistent today as well because we're going to talk about that story and about how we keep coming after Jesus, asking him to help us. And he's going to throw us more than crumbs. He's going to give us himself. And that's going to be a feast that we're going to talk about. So I want you to have your ears open, listening for that story of a puppy. And Jesus called her a puppy. But she didn't mind because she knew that she would get from Jesus what she needed. And so will we. So put your hands together. We're going to do a repeat after me prayer. And I'm going to ask the church to join us in this. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. you are good in every way. You help us, you us. Provide, for us, provide for us, and save us, and save us. even when we don't deserve it. Even when we don't deserve it. Give, us Give us faith to keep coming to you, to coming to you. trusting you. Give us, trusting you. Give us. All, we all we need. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. Amen. amen. Thank you all for coming up. Jesus bless your worship. <laughs>
grace and peace to you then from Jesus our Savior. Amen. And the word that God has to encourage us today is that word from the gospel from Matthew 15 that we already shared. And so as we begin, I just invite you to join me in this word of prayer. Lord God, now may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our heart, and they always be pleasing to you, Lord God, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today I, I want to invite you to imagine what a conversation with this woman from Matthew 15 would be like if, if she came and talked to us today. But before we begin that conversation, take note of, of what we know about her. She was a Canaanite woman. Canaanites were people of the land that Israel were always opposed to. They were at odds forever. They still are. And we see, though, that in the story she is persistent. She begins and she keeps on calling out after Jesus, calling him Lord three times. Three different times she calls him Lord. She asks for mercy. She knows it's something she doesn't deserve, but she keeps on asking for it. And she keeps persistently calling because her daughter is not well. Specifically, it says she was tormented by a demon. And when Jesus finally speaks, she remains persistent asking for his help. And finally, when Jesus does talk with her, he called her a dog. He called her a dog. But the woman reveals what Jesus is simply saying is that she has great faith. So now let's imagine what this woman would tell us if she could be here now with us. What would she tell us now that the meal is over? I remember the day like it was yesterday, my daughter tormented by a demon. Nothing, we did, nothing made a difference. Nobody could help her. I don't know what we could have done anymore. And then I heard news of a prophet named Jesus of Nazareth coming to our area. He was a Jewish prophet leaving the area of Galilee and he was coming to our vicinity. And news spread to us about him, mainly about the miraculous things that this Jesus performed. Thousands were fed, blind could see, lame could walk. Now when somebody makes you feel better with just words, news about that travels fast. And I heard about him and what he was teaching. And as I did, I came to believe that he was more than a prophet. I believe he is Lord. And even more, I, I saw Jesus as son of David. I know the stories of their God, their God named Lord, the God who rescued them, who would fight for them, who brought them to this land. And I knew, I knew the story is how one day their Messiah would come, an anointed one from God, and save not just them, but to save all peoples, even Canaanite people, even people like me, Gentiles. And so I knew I had to try. I mean, it was my daughter, and she had been sick, and more sick, tormented by a demon. Nothing tried worked. So I knew I had to try, and I approached him, this group of men around him, and I began to call out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is tormented by a demon. He, he didn't hear, I don't think. So I persisted. I called over and over, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. And as I looked, it was as if he wasn't listening. I could see his friends. They were pointing at me, and they kept pointing, saying, send her away. But I, I kept calling out. I was persistent. Finally, Jesus spoke. He may have been talking to me or his friends. I don't know. But my heart sank. He talked about how his mission was to the lost sheep of Israel, to his people. But I persisted. I knew he was focused and determined to restore Israel, that nothing would deter him from that work. But I kept asking. I persisted. And, and finally, I fell at his feet. Lord, I said, help me. Then he spoke. It's not good, he said, to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And he was right. Children's food isn't for the little dogs. It's not for the puppies. I know that. 
But I do know also that the puppies get the crumbs. You're right, Lord, I said. But even the puppies get the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And then he looked down at me with a face and, a, and eyes and a smile I'll never forget. But even more, I'll never forget the words he said to me. Dear one, he said, dear one, your faith is great. Let it be done as you wish. Can you imagine it? From that moment, my little daughter was better. No more sickness, no more evil spirit tormenting her. This was no crumb, it was a feast. And I, I was eating with my Lord, my Savior. He listened to me. He spoke to me. He helped me. Mercy. I didn't deserve it. But he welcomed me to his table of help and mercy. Crumbs from the master. No, it's a feast. My daughter healed. And me, a Gentile, welcomes to his table. I see you have a Lord's table here, too. You have a meal from the Lord as well. A little piece of bread, yes, a crumb, compared to the meals that you usually eat, but it's a feast. You come to the Lord's table, and he gives you help. There is the forgiveness of sins that he spoke about. And where there's that forgiveness, there's, there's going to be life and, and salvation. And those aren't just crumbs. It's gifts of a feast. This Lord welcomes you to his table. Come, seeking his help with your guilt. You come to be assured of your eternal home. You come, and he grants what you wish and ask, restoring your body and soul. I heard the master say just a few words, but it was a feast for my soul. You may come today and eat just a wafer and, and have a sip of wine, but it's a feast for your soul. But when the meal's over, Jesus went back to his place. After he was giving me what I asked for, he went back to his place. He went back to Galilee. And, and I went back home. And then what? After the meal is over. Then what? Well, I went back to my life. I went back to the routines of my day-to-day -day life. I went back home, and I worked. I took care of my family. No, my daughter was healed. She was better. But the days that followed just were like all the other days. I got up, I did the things of that day, household work, chores, taking care of my family, making sure that the clothes is washed. The days were filled with well, what I did every day. And the feast with Jesus, well, it kind of got pushed to the back burner. I'd gotten my wish, my daughter was better. Now, now I wasn't so persistent. I wasn't always persistent asking for the Lord's heart help anymore. But that's not all. I went back to a town where Jesus wasn't anything very special. Oh, people thought of him as a, as a curious Jewish preacher. Somebody who was doing amazing things, yeah, but that's about it. Nobody really took notice of Jesus. Nobody was asking him for help. They didn't see Jesus as the day-to-day -day person who just fed them, took care of them. I mean, they were happy for me. My daughter was better. But nobody was really looking after Jesus and going to him anymore. I mean, I got my wish, but, but living in that town like I was, I really wasn't so persistent anymore. I wasn't keeping coming after the Lord, asking for his help anymore. What about you? When, when you leave the Lord's table, when the meal is over, what happens for you? I imagine life goes back to routine. What happens when, when you leave this place, when you live in a town where, where not everybody sees the need for Jesus' help? I mean, if you're like me, you can begin to forget. You might lose sight of the help that he gives, that he wants to give. 
if you're like me, you're, you're not so persistent anymore in seeking the Lord's help and, and all that you need from Him. Is that what it's like for you? When the meal is over? I mean, here's what happens for me. I, I get up in the morning. It comes. There's the bathroom, the breakfast table, get ready for work. Well, things get pretty busy and rushed. And that time that I wanted to spend with Jesus, I missed. Prayer, when it happens, it's quick, it's regular. If I pray at all. Day starts out, and I haven't been seeking the Lord's help. Then the day goes by. And, and maybe you live in a country where, where people aren't always spending time with God, looking for His help. Oh, sure. I mean, people know that Jesus is somebody important in the Bible, and Christmas is really nice. And when something bad happens, when there's an emergency, well, it gets sick. People turn towards this Jesus. It's nice to have him around at those times. But not many people, not too many people, see Jesus providing help and care every day, moment by moment. Not, not everybody seems to be talking with Jesus. They take breaks during the day, but how many of you have ever taken a, a prayer break? Coffee breaks, soda breaks, but what about prayer breaks? I mean, life isn't really seen through the lens of Jesus providing day by day, moment by moment care. Few believe that every breath that you take depends really on, on Jesus, on his power and his presence. Almost nobody realizes that God works to care for, for us by giving us food and, and shelter and families that he gives us the things in our lives that we just need. How often do you hear of somebody taking a prayer break instead of a lunch break? Do people around you thank God for the paychecks anymore? Are they asking God to bless and protect their homes that they live in, giving grace before meals, pray when they're traveling? Do people say God willing about plans that are making for the future? What do you do to those things? And so the day goes by, and, and Jesus gets pushed, like in my life it did, to the back burner. I mean, he's regulated to church, to communion, to occasional prayers. But do you persist in seeking the Lord's help day in and day out for every breath you take? It's as if when we leave here, when the meal is over, Jesus goes back to Galilee, and you go back home. Of course, there was one time when Jesus did go back to Galilee. After my daughter was healed, Jesus did precisely that one time. He went back to Galilee because he was determined to do what God said him to do, to, to save the lost sheep. He was persistent in that work, and nothing would keep him from it. And that meant going back to Galilee. And then I heard he went on to Jerusalem. And in doing so, Jesus was persistent. He was persistent in seeking his father's help. Jesus would always take time to pray, to, to spend time with his father in heaven. I mean, Jesus, think about it, was Lord, he was God himself. And even when he lived on this earth, he still knew he needed to spend time with his father. He saw all of his life under God's care and under God's protection. Jesus knew that everything was given to him. Whatever food he had, the shelter that he had, the friendships, the family, all of it, 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 it came from him. It was daily bread. And so he persisted in being with God in prayer. But that's not all. Jesus persisted. Jesus was persistent in the work that he came to do. And he did it. No routines of life would keep Jesus from that mission, that work. His schedule, it was set. His mind was made up. He was on his way to Galilee, and then he would go to Jerusalem. And there, the people that were around him didn't want anything to do with him. 
They didn't want him around at all. They, they didn't see him as anything special. No, he was more of a problem that needed to be eliminated. He was somebody who they needed to kill. And yet, he was on a mission to die, or to die for us. I mean, his work was to go to the cross. His last breath that he'd taken was to help us. The cross was the place where forgiveness, this, this gift and salvation, and, and the life with him would be won and prepared for us. The cross is where Jesus would prepare the table that helps us. And he was persistent. Not just for the lost sheep of Israel, but, but for Gentiles too. For you, for me. Dogs. Puppies eating scraps from the table. No. No, we're feasting on the help of the Lord. And, and his food is not just crumbs. His, his food is this forgiveness. Even when we push him to the back burner, he gives us forgiveness. And salvation. In a land where he's not seen as anything special. And to be eternal life in a home that's promised, that goes beyond anything our imagination could ask. Is that crumbs? No. It's a feast. So, what happens when the meal is over? What happens when you leave this place? What happens when you go back home? Are you still persistent? Do you go with that sure, confident faith that Jesus goes with you? You know, he did not stay dead. He, he did not endlessly lie in a tomb. We know he rose so that he is ever present, ever persistent, a helper in every time of need. And when, when do we need him? I mean, when a child is sick, we need him. When life hurts and there is pain, we need him. When there is emergencies that press in on us, we need him. But there are also other times that we need him to help. When we get up in the morning, we need his help. When we're at work, we need his help. When life is, is a routine, we need his help. When we take a breath, we need his help. When we travel, or we shop, or we eat, or we sleep, or we simply live, we need his help. That day I persisted in seeking Jesus' help when my daughter was hurting. And for a while that seemed, well, that seemed enough, but it wasn't. Life went on, yes, and I began to see how much I need his help every day, each hour, every minute, every breath. And that's what I would encourage for you as well. Begin each day with, with Jesus' time. Be persistent in seeking his help day after day. And not only that, be persistent in, in seeking Jesus' help throughout the day even during those lunch breaks. Because he gives his help to us in so many ways, day in and day out. He went with us, he cares for us, he helps us. And you start again with this day. This morning, come again to his table, to this meal that he has for you, and, and seek his help. Listen to what he says, this is my body, this is my blood for you. And Jesus will grant your request. You feast on his forgiveness, his salvation, his life, prepared for you at the cross. And when the meal is over, when you go home, you go home not just by yourself. Jesus goes with you in ever-present help and you need him. You need him for every breath that you take. So be persistent. 
Be persistent in seeking the Lord's help every day. And when you seek his help, take it from me. Jesus gives a generous helping every day. And that's not just crumbs. Amen. And may the peace of God that does transcend all understanding guard your hearts, guard your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This summer I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward and to gather the gifts and the offerings that we bring before the Lord in our worship of Him and prepare for the meal that He has for us. gifts, these offerings as token of the sacrifice of our lives that we bring before you. Use them to always extend your loving rule in our lives and throughout the world. Amen. It's our privilege again today to stand as the people of God and confess our common faith in who he is and what he has done for us in the words of the Nicene Creed we share together. I believe in one God, Jesus and pray for all people in their needs. Lord Jesus, you are indeed the God of all peoples. We thank and praise you that you have sought the outcast and through the church you have welcomed in even Gentiles, us, into the family of faith. God, your mercies, we know they come every day. And so we ask that 
you would help us to be persistent in our faith. Because each day you open your hand and you provide for the needs of everyone on earth. We praise you, Lord God, for every grace and blessing you provide and that we receive. Lord, in your mercy. And God, strengthen your church in all the world. May the comforting message of salvation that is told in Jesus Christ be continue to be told to troubled souls everywhere. God, we pray that you would use ourselves as Christians and our congregation here to extend that healing and hope to the people of our community. Lord, in your mercy. God, today we bring our request for the various structures of our culture and our world that you might be a blessing upon us. Bless our national, state, and local governments. Grant us civil servants who are worthy of honor and respect. Lord, in your mercy. And invigorate the schools of our land, Lord. Give success to every effort that helps students to read, think, and communicate in ways that will promote an informed and responsible people. God, arouse curious minds to discover the wonders of your creative order. So give teachers and give students the desire to pursue excellence. Lord, in your mercy, strengthen the families of our country and our community. God, give moms and dads a renewed commitment to be good parents. Give children and young people the wisdom to see their parents as your representatives. Lord God, today we pray that you would lead us to love one another as you have loved us. Lord, in your mercy, God, we pray for those in our midst who are hurting, who call upon you for healing and restoration. We're confident, Lord, you hear our prayers, and, and we pray that you, in your will and in your ways, would restore them according to your purpose. God, we especially pray for those that we name before you now in our hearts. And Lord God, we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. We, we lift before you Lorraine Ebert and Lillian Hildebrand, women of faith whose days, Lord, you know their number, and we pray that they be prepared to meet you and be received home. Be with our sister Lorraine Berg and Bonnie Lewin as they recover from surgeries and injuries. Help them, Lord, to face all that comes their way with courage and hope. And we pray for Richard Miller for treatments that are, are trying to be given in, in the midst of hopeless situations. We pray that hope can be given. And above all, encourage his family to cast all their worries and, and cares upon you because you do love them, Lord, and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, we also today want to pray for the family and friends of Angie Sass called home to be with you. Lord, as you have welcomed her by grace through faith in Jesus, we pray that that family, as they grieve and mourn, would do so with the hope that Jesus has the last word of life and resurrection for all who live and believe in him. Lord, in your mercy. So into your hands, Lord Jesus, we now commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, as we trust in your mercy, as you live and reign with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. meal that Jesus prepares for us that we're going to celebrate again today in the Lord's Supper. And we do that with the practice of the New Testament, that we invite people to come knowing what they're looking for and why they are coming. And what we're looking for is Jesus. In his promise, he declared it. The bread is my body, the wine is my blood, given and shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. And that's why we come then. As broken people, as sinful people, we know that there is only one Savior who can restore us and give us that hope. And so we come in that faith with that meal. 
To those who believe that, to those who are prepared to receive the meal in that fashion, we welcome you to the table. Um, if you have not been prepared, or if that is not your understanding, both children or adult, we still welcome you to come forward to receive a blessing instead of the meal. Um, if you are to receive the meal with an open hand for the wafer, um, and then if you're just there for a blessing, children or adults, just kind of put your hands across your chest and, and we share God's verbal blessing of his love and mercy in your life. And with that, I invite you to join me in this time of prayer as we prepare for this meal. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us children of men, and you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send your Holy And our Lord Jesus then, on the night that he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do to remember me. And in the same way also, Jesus took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood in the New Testament that is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and we drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus. You be seated. The gifts of God for you, the people of God. This gift of God's love for you in the body and blood of Jesus strengthen the power to your faith. Go with that peace with you all the days of joy.
invite you to stand as we offer our prayer of thanks. God, our Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. We ask you not to trust that his blessing goes with you everywhere. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 